friends! Welcome to another Artist Alley's Tips video. Today we'll be talking about buttons. So let's begin! First off, what are buttons? Buttons usually refer to the pinback style of button or badge that is designed to fasten to a surface using a safety pin mechanism. This mechanism is located on the back, and on the front, an illustration, text, or other design is featured. They are usually circular in shape, but they can come in other shapes, and we'll talk about that later in the video. So let's talk about sizing. Typical button sizes range from one and a quarter inches to three inches. I have also seen some as small as three quarters of an inch. So with such a wide range of sizes, which size is best for you? Larger sizes are better for displaying more of the artwork because you have much more room for details on a larger space. However, smaller sizes are more convenient for the person who buys the button. They are way less bulky than larger buttons and they can fit more small buttons on their bag, jacket, etc. So it's up to you what size you want depending on your needs. I would suggest that more detailed works look way better on larger buttons, but nice simple flat designs work very nicely on smaller sizes. Next, let's talk about shapes. Circle shape is by far the most common button shape. Some other button shapes include rectangle, heart, and star, and you can find button makers that make all these kinds of shapes. That being said, I have yet to see a button maker for star shapes that you can use for your own home use. These may be only available through a manufacturer, but if you do know of where you can buy a button maker for star shapes, please leave your recommendation in the comments. I tried to research this myself and I had a hard time trying to find this particular one. In my opinion, when it comes to what shapes to use, circle buttons are by far easier to design for, make, and get supplies for. Since it's the most common button shape, it's very easy to find tutorials or supplies and things like that. However, Rectangle and heart and star and all those shapes because they are much less common They could give your button a little bit more flair So it's up to you to decide what shape works best with your art But I would say if you're starting to make buttons for the first time stick with circle buttons as they are the easiest So how many should you keep in stock? I would say anywhere between five to ten of them as always if you are going to a bigger convention, stock more than 10. But if you're going to a much smaller convention, then between 5 and 10 is probably good enough for you. It may just depend on your manufacturer and what their minimum is. Though you can always just take part of your stock with you to a convention and not all that you received from your manufacturer. And you can always sell your leftovers at other conventions or in an online shop if you have those. So what about pricing? Depending on the size and shape, I would price them between two to five dollars. I wouldn't do any cheaper for sure. I actually did one dollar buttons for a long time and I'm pretty sure I barely made a profit off of them, especially since I made a lot of mistakes when making them at home. So I would say the smaller circle kind of style buttons, I would price closer to the $2 range and the larger or more uniquely shaped ones, I would price closer to the $5 range. So some final notes for you. I would say that buttons are a really good item for a first time artists, especially if you can get a hold of a machine so you can make them on your own. The cheaper selling price is appealing for customers with small budgets so buttons tend to be much easier to sell than other products. And as I said before, you can have buttons made through a manufacturer or you can try your hand at making them yourself at home. I would only recommend getting a machine if you plan on producing a lot of buttons. Most machines can cost between $100 to $500 depending on how advanced it is. Some even cost up to $1,000. You can get a really cheap version or a hand press for about $40, but in this case, it's definitely an instance of you get what you pay for. With cheaper machines, I would have issues with creating a lot of duds. 
And so I end up wasting a lot of my materials. If you're able to invest in it, I would personally recommend going with a semi-automatic style at the very least. It's on the pricier side for sure, but I rarely, if ever, make mistakes with them, especially compared to the hand-pressed version. If you don't plan on selling a ton of buttons though, I would just stick with finding a manufacturer you can make buttons through. Finally, when it comes to storing buttons, I would recommend using either a bead organizer or a hardware storage box. These kinds of organizers have a lot of little small compartments, so they're great for organizing small items like buttons. You can usually find this kind of stuff at your local hardware or craft store, and if you don't have any of those in your area, you could probably find it very easily online. And that's about it for this video. If you have any more questions in regards to buttons or button makings, please leave a comment. Or if you have any questions or suggestions of what you would like to see in future Artist Alley videos, also leave a comment on this video. Until next time, friends, have a great one!